Hey guys, AFIT Fitz here, and we've got some exciting news today. We have a brand new version of RetroPie out, version 4.8, and we're going to update it and go over its features today. Hey guys, happy Pi Day, and because it's Pi Day, RetroPie came up with this new version, version 4.8. Here it is on that RetroPie website that we always use. And it's some pretty interesting features. So here are the major changes since 4.7.1, which is what we have been using in the past. There's an on-screen keyboard now, which is great. So you don't have to use that USB keyboard. Uh, we've got improved joystick support. We've got improvements to the RetroPie package managing. That's a new version of RetroArt, which is version 1.10. We were using 1.8.8 previously, so this is a big improvement there as well. New update to the, to the emulator cores, which is great. We've got some emulation station updates, and we've got some other new uh, updates for different emulators. So we're looking pretty good at this. There's some new ones that are installed in as well. The biggest one that I'm looking forward to, though, is uh, the support for Sega Saturn. So hopefully we can give that a try here uh, in the next few videos, and we can see what's going here. So let's head on over to our RetroPie, and let's start the update. Here we are at our RetroPie splash screen, and let's go ahead into the RetroPie menu, and we are going to go into... RetroPie setup, and we are going to update. So we just click on this update button here. Are you sure we'll update the installed packages? We're going to say yes. So here you need to make sure you're connected to the internet, um, and you need to make sure everything else you connected to the internet, and it's going to update everything for you here. So here we go. We're running the script, and it's running it right now. Moving along pretty quickly, actually. A little bit quicker than I thought it would be. And there we go. It's doing its post-update looks, making sure everything it needs is in here. And if you don't have uh, the RetroPie installed yet and you're looking to, up to install a brand new version 4.8, all you need to do is use that imager. It's already updated on the imager, the Raspberry Pi imager. So if you use that, it will take 4.8 already. So you don't need to do this update after that. You can go ahead and check for it. Uh, and if you're not sure if you, what version you have, you can always just run this update and you'd be good. Okay. RetroPie skipped and pre-made RetroPie SD card images are available to download for free. There you go. Pre-made RetroPie. No copyright games are included with RetroPie. If you insult this software, you can let us know about it by emailing RetroPie. So yeah, never pay for this software. Okay. It is free and everything you can do, I'm showing you on these videos and it's very easy to do. Again, if you have any questions, feel free to check out my link tree, shoot me an email, shoot a comment in one of these videos, and we can get through it together. All right, so let's go OK. Would you like to update the underlying O package? Yes. Let's update those, o oh, those OSs. Alright, so now we are all updated. So what you saw there is you start go ahead and apply all the patches, you start check for all the uh, emulators that's installed in the system already, went through and updated all them. It looks like we have some pretty good improvements, so let's go ahead and take a quick look and see what we got. Alright, I've gone ahead and I've rebooted the system after we got out of the update, and I've got my 360 controller here. I will note the first thing I noticed is that my D-pad isn't working on the 360 controller. My analog stick is, so if I use the analog stick, to move, it'll move, but if I use the D-pad, it does not move, okay? So first thing I noticed, so I'll take a look and see what's going on there. Um, 
So it looks like everything is here where it needs to be. So one of the big things that was changed was the on-screen on keyboard. So let's go ahead and let's check our Wi-Fi, because this is the easiest place to see that we're supposed to get the on-screen keyboard. So let's see. We're going to connect to a Wi-Fi network. And we'll go ahead and we will pick one of these. See, and there's our on-screen keyboard. So we do have the on-screen keyboard to help us input before. Previously, we had to use the US key, USB keyboard to input the SSID uh, for the Wi-Fi. So you don't need that anymore. So that's great. So let's go ahead and we'll cancel this. Oops. So again, we'll cancel this. Come on, cancel. I'm going to use the joystick. Cancel. And we'll exit. Uh, so that improved joystick support, we see that it's it's picking up on that joypad now. It's not picking up the D-pad. So we'll have to take a look at that. Uh, probably not in this video, but I'm definitely going to do something on how to get that D-pad in because I know when I'm playing my Nintendo games, uh, I tend to use that D-pad more than the analog stick just because sometimes you need that finer tooth, especially if like Castlevania, when you need to put us up in the attack button to do certain things, like that special weapon. Uh, I find that the analog stick is, is kind of wishy-washy on it, so... Uh, RetroArch, we've got an updated version of RetroArch, so let's go ahead and let's take a look and see what version of RetroArch we are running here. So we will go to RetroArch right here. And here you go, you can see uh, it's got the two gamepads there, and we are on uh, RetroArch 1.10.0, so this is great. Uh, this looked very similar to the 1.8.8. .8. Uh, the menu here is much better than the version that was on there originally. Uh, I will say that. So this is this is great. So let's go ahead and we will exit here. Let's quit Retro Arch. And we got an updated emulation station. And the easiest way to show you that is if we go ahead and we restart. Oops, did it again. Quit RetroArch. I'm going to go back. And we are going to... Come on. Oh, use that again. So we are going to quit. And we're going to restart the system. Yes, go ahead and really restart. So when it restarts the system, you'll see this uh, emulation station screen that's going to be coming up here in a second. Is the RetroPie booting up? And here's that emulation station screen I was telling you about. After the RetroPie splash, the RetroPie splash screen. All right, so it's a little bit different, and you can see down below it's it's loading those all those. Um, emulators and it looks a little bit different so it's there so this is supposed to have more fluid movement from left to right i don't really notice the difference um but it uh they said it improved it so i'll go ahead and i'll take that as uh they did um they fixed some of the supports for themes uh added a progress bar during the loading so we saw that when the uh when it was uh loaded there so i went and i reset up my controller configuration for the xbox 360 controller and now i've got no issues so i can use the d-pad to move left and right here and so i can use the d-pad here Move left and right. I can use the analog stick left and right. So we're good there. So everything's back the way it should be. Uh, the one thing I did want to check is in the previous video, we had go ahead and changed some hotkeys. So the A is B and B is A is swapped now. So I got to swap those back. So let's go ahead and let's exit out of this because what I wanted to see is let's go uh, back, go into RetroPie, and we want to go into our uh, Retro. Arch. And we're going to make sure rewinds on and see if it has our R3 stick as the default for the restart. So uh, we're going to go down to uh, settings and we're going to go to input and we are going to go into hotkeys. And fast forward. So, okay, so those are gone. So we need to, any hotkeys that you had previously 
uh, defined, which makes sense since it's all been updated. You need to re go ahead and redefine. So let's go ahead and redefine these. Uh, it's going to be L stick, and then our reset is reset, reset, reset game. Is I use the R3 stick to push down, so we're going to go ahead and reset that. Okay, so that's good. But now we're going to go turn on our rewind, so we'll go back and we will go back, and we need to go into frame throttle. And we need to go to rewind and turn the rewind support on. Rewind frames on or two. So we're good there. Back, back, and then we're going to go back one more to our main menu. And we are going to configuration file, and we are going to save the current configuration file. Boom, we are done. So we'll go back, we'll go back. Actually, we'll go back and we'll quit RetroArch. I'm going to check the stick and the D-pad support, see if we need to put that back on. So we don't, because that's already on. So I'm using the joy pad here. He'll move, and I use the D-pad, and he'll move. So he's good to go. Almost made it. Who doesn't love little Mario, right? I don't notice any uh, noticeable improvements. Seems to be working fine, but works great. Well, there's our Pi Day update, guys, for our RetroPi. And we noticed a few things after updating to 4.8. We had to redefine our Xbox 360 controller. Uh, some of the buttons carried over, some of the buttons did not. Uh, and the biggest thing that I will say is make sure you have a keyboard available just in case or a standard two-button uh, wired controller so you can plug it right in and move around any of those menus that you need to move around with. Uh, so, again, thanks for watching. Hit that subscribe button so you can get notified when I have all my other videos come out. And uh, feel free to give me a like if you really like this content. And uh, feel free to leave a comment below. Thanks for watching, guys.